What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video, and welcome to a new era, perhaps, of Town Hall 13. We have definitely seen a big shift uh, at the top Town Hall level here in terms of what the best attack strategy seem to be with the single Inferno, these more anti-two-star style bases that are very anti-queen charge becoming more popular. The Drag Bat and Electro Dragon attacks are becoming very viable and look like the best option for a lot of bases, to be honest. I mean, this ward was just had a ton of them. I mean, there's only one non-Dragon uh, slash E-Drag Town Hall 13 three-star from this war. Um, and there were plenty, as you will see, that did include the Dragons. So let's take a look at this, um, talk about kind of why it's working now and how you want to use it what types of bases to use it on, and maybe even how to defend against it. Those are all things you might want to think about as a Town Hall 13. Um, so anyway, you can see here, this is a classic example of how to use the drag bat strategy. King, queen on one side. Now one thing uh, you noticed is that the royal champion was used. You can get really cheeky with your royal champion. Use her to help create that funnel. You gotta make the pathing somewhat narrow, not as narrow as maybe for other attack strategies. The dragons can take on a wider entry uh, onto the base. Using that ice golem to tank a wizard tower, um, that's always a good practice. And these single infernos are really making it possible. Even with the scatter shots being kind of a threat to the bats, uh, without the multi infernos on a lot of these bases, it is uh, very doable to move these bats through a good portion of the base with those free spells. Um, and it's all about the bats. They gotta get the job done. The dragons alone do not do enough damage uh, for this type of attack strategy at this town hall level. Um, so anyway, we will get into the details as we move through some more of these attacks here. Fast forward, um, but like I said, the basics, king on one side, queen on the other for the funnel. That's what this base required. The royal champion, I think, along with the uh, the king there, to get a little bit deeper, you need you know I mean you need a, a better funnel than typically just the outer layer. This is not Town Hall 10 anymore. Um, these are some big bases you're trying to narrow down a little bit and try to get some you know reasonable pathing out of. Uh, another drag bat attack. Let's take a look and see how how it was used here. One thing that's always a good sign is when you have these central scatter shots. Um, you can take them out with your dragons, wherever entry uh, you come from. Uh, that's definitely good for the bats. Now you'll notice the Royal Champion was used over here. Not a big fan of that trade. I mean, the single Inferno locked on right away. I would have used an Ice Golem to tank initially, um, especially because it could have frozen the single. It would have been close enough and uh, helped freeze that Royal Champion up. So, you know, keep that in mind. The Royal Champion, if you can use a Giant, an Ice Golem, whatever the case may be, you can make it uh, get tons more value than just dropping it you know without any support like that um that being said a good job creating a very cheap funnel up there just a baby dragon or so king queen come in gonna hit the abilities here gonna get some good value get the town hall down which is what um is needed here cc i mean it's you know threatening a little bit and out's gonna come the cc troops but the queen's gonna be able to handle it um and get the town hall down before those archers become too much of a problem Archer Hound CC is definitely a tough CC to face. Um, it helps by not luring the Hound, but if you do, pull it to the corner with an Archer, always a good practice. Um, and it worked because the Queen used her cloak and the Hound ignored her. So anyway, the Dragon's coming through. You know, you gotta use that Tome right as they're taking all that damage from the, you know, the Queen, the scatter shots. There's typically that point, um, you, know, you can kind of identify it where it's kind of go time for those Dragons. They need that help. Uh, a single rage will will suffice for this. Focusing the spells on the bats as you should. Um, they're coming through here, and you can see once again, Ice Golem's going to tank a Wizard Tower, maybe slightly early, but um, I'd say better early than late for the most part. Uh, uh, freezes going down, plenty of freezes for this. Uh, has plenty to, to keep those Wizard Towers uh, out of commission there, and then the bats, plenty of dragons up as well. Um, so you can see. This attack can work out very well on a lot of bases that you otherwise would kind of be scratching your head for, thinking, oh, how do I hybrid this, or how do I Yeti smash this? Um, that's what they're set up to defend. They're not as well set up to defend dragons. Um, the key things you're looking for, single infernos, central scatter shots, but even that's not terribly important. Mainly the single infernos, the ground expos definitely help. If you have four ground expos, that's a lot of damage being taken out of the game um, that can no longer target your dragons. 
Let's move on. Um, number five here. I think this is the E-drag attack, and it is. Okay. Now, when you think E-drags, it might have, it's probably been a while since a lot of people have used them, but I've seen some competitive uh, wars as well in ESL where clans have really been using these to smash some bases. And the thing with these E-drags is it's funny. I've, in my own experience as well, I've seen this. They either crush the base or they don't. And it's either way, there's, there's not a whole lot of middle ground. But um, there's certain things you can do to make it more likely you'll have the, uh, the crush the base case rather than that like 50% two star, which we always hate to get at Town Hall 13. Um, Town Hall goes down. Look to do early E-Drag chains. Get the value from these E-Dragons ahead of time. There's a reason why they're used as funnel troops. Um, instead of spamming them all at once, oftentimes you can put one or two of them down and take out an archer tower and a bunch of trash before the eagle even activates, before they're even targeted by anything. That way, once you drop your main force, they're going straight for the base. Those loons out in, ahead are good at uh, taking single targeted inferno beams, soaking up seeking air mines. Um, and then it's really about using those spells nice and early while your E-Drags are still alive. Um, using those rages nice and early. Uh, spells early is the key uh, for the E-Drags. They're going to spread out as you can see a little bit. Um, but if you hit that, um, if you hit your uh, Warden, that's the term I'm looking for. If you hit your Warden's ability early, you can, uh, you can do a lot of damage um, with that, you know, 8 seconds or whatever they have where they don't take any damage. Um, if you use that at the right time, just as they're kind of spreading out and they're all about to lock on to a nice chain of buildings, I mean, look at how many E-Drags are left up. This was just too easy. Uh, the Royal Champion's good for the back end. Unfortunately, the Lava Hound was lured out, but oftentimes the CC will be destroyed. So any Lava Hound or Ice Golem that might have been in there will no longer come out, uh, which is even better. Don't even have to worry about that. The Royal Champion can finish off whatever is left. Um, you can use her for funneling as well. I found on E-Dragon attacks, typically, you're going to want to use the Royal Champion uh, more towards the back end, generally speaking, as opposed to a Drag Bat, where um, sometimes it's better to use her to set things up, because the bats are really what's finishing off the base. On an E-Drag attack, you don't have the bats, typically, because the E-Drags need those spells. Um, so you need something else to kind of help finish off. Something more mobile, something quicker, um, because really... As we move on to this last attack here, number three, uh, really the thing with both E-Drags and Dragons is that they can move through the first part of the base really well, but oftentimes the back end is where they have trouble. The bats solve that problem for the drag bat attack. For an E-Dragon attack, the real champion is going to kind of be your go-to. Um, so only one E-Drag attack. Wish we had more, um, and maybe we'll, we'll show some more on the channel as we, as we see more from some wars. Anyway though, um, setting things up here, this is one of the uh, opposing clans attacks, setting things up with the Royal Champion there, creating a nice funnel, um, getting a few layers deeper than otherwise would have been possible. Queen uh, wall breaking her in on the other side, you know, you got to be creative with using your heroes to get as much value as possible. That is where you can often set yourself up for success because the dragons can get a very predictable amount taken out. There's not a whole lot of uh, guesswork with how much the dragons can do. Um, so as, as you use these strategies, you'll kind of get a sense of how, how much value dragons can get um, and what you can expect from them. So there's the rage, nicely dropped there, keeping everything in it for the most part. And then the warden's ability covers the town hall, everything moving through, and another rage for these dragons. You can see not a whole lot of splash on the back end, which is why double rage the dragons and went a little lighter on the free spells there only two of them and i think only five or six bat spells i forget it might have been five but um it's going to be plenty and also the ice golem tank in that wizard tower um that's always a plus bats are just going to crush the rest of this base i mean this is not even close here um if you can get things done it, it's really working backwards to be honest with these strategies especially drag bat Look at what you want the bats to get. Work backwards, what do the dragons need to get? Work backwards, what do the heroes in the funneling setup need to get in order to make that possible? Um, so it's really a, a matter of working backwards. If you see a spot of the base that is very susceptible to bats, then you can say, okay, how can I set my bats up to be able to take that out? How can I get the rest of the base, those scatter shots, the 
one multi-inferno, like some wizard towers. How do I tank that slash get it taken out to set up the bats? And then, okay, how do I use my heroes to set up my dragons and my ice golems if I'm using them to get their job done? You know, work backwards like that. Anyway, that would do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, love covering these strategies at Town Hall 13. Um, so that that's it, and I will see you guys next time. Bisectatron out.